Lack of energy for cooking and lightning among most households in Malawi has exerted a lot of pressure on the environment as more and more trees are being cut almost daily for charcoal production and firewood which are primary sources of energy. This demand for energy both in rural and urban areas in Malawi has rapidly contributed to massless deforestation. The only source of energy in Malawi is hydroelectrically generated. And because its supply is not adequate to sustain the whole country, it is rather prioritized to the manufacturing industries, public institutions such as schools and hospitals, thereby depriving most homes in both rural and urban areas of it. And according to research, this has left almost 90% of Malay's population dependent of forest as a major source of energy in the form of firewood and charcoal. Electricity is hardly available, not only in villages and even in urban areas in Malawi. And even if most people were connected to the power grid, they are poor to afford it as they live below the poverty line. This has bred serious environmental challenges like deforestation and a number of natural weather calamities like prolonged drought, floods and heavy rains which come as a result of climate change as more and more smoke contaminate the atmosphere. Concerned with these environmental challenges, the Department of Environmental Affairs for Mangochi District Council is working on a number of interventions with the aim of reducing pressure on the environment as a primary source of energy. Basically, as a district, there are a number of issues that um, we are being affected environmentally, but in relation to climate change, the major issue is deforestation. Most of the households, as well as the institutions, they use fuel wood as a source of energy. So the issue of charcoal product production as well as the firewood collection is very, very high. As such, that is becoming a serious issue and is negatively affecting the environment. The use of agriculture, human and animal waste as a source of energy is now being encouraged. Intrinsic Biogas Company is specialized in the installation of biogas digesters and were contracted to install a 62 cubic meter digester at Mangwachi Prison. Biogas is it's a technology that has been there in more than a decade. What we do, we take uh, food waste, uh, human waste, agricultural waste, we convert it into a formidable gas, a burnable gas, uh, which we call biogas, um, which has got um, about 35% 35, 35 carbon dioxide and about 65% uh, percent methane gas and um, it's combustible in any type of um, engine uh, which uses uh, petrol and also different engines that we can use. For us to be able to generate uh, biogas we need to use a digester. So a digester is a form of a container which uh, operates uh, in the absence of oxygen. So we collect all these waste that I've mentioned to you, we put it into a digester. It might be a flex digester or a fixed dome, and that's where the fermentation takes place. Um, when you put uh, food waste or human waste or agricultural waste into a digester and um, there's no oxygen in it, uh, it ferments and uh, produces the, the biogas that I'm talking about. It's a simple technology. Uh, a digester will have uh, three pipes. So it will have an inlet and it will have an outlet and it will have a gas outlet. So on top of the digester there is a pipe, um, a small pipe that is connected to the port and the gas travels into that pipe direct into the port. Um, and that's how it works. Um, there is nothing complicated about it. It's something that um, as a country, we can take advantage of it, it dries it, it's cheap, and um, it will work to for our advantage. It's one of the best gases that exist in the world. Um, it's free. You don't need, all you need to do is to purchase the digester, and once you've done that, you are able to generate uh, biogas at your home. And um, it's the safest gas that you can find uh, in the world. Um, it does not explode. Um, when it it leaks, it just uh, consumes with uh, oxygen, and that's it. So it's one of the best uh, gas that is available in the in the world. In terms of biogas technology, we thought that that could be a substitute to the use of fuel, which is a challenge to the district. 
So basically we thought of using that technology to substitute fuel just because it's a clean technology and basically it does not contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. So we thought by doing that we're going to reduce pressure on the forest resource which is a big problem in the district. The use of biogas is saving trees and this means saving people's time to fetch firewood. Time which could otherwise have been used on other meaningful household steps and interventions to economic development. One of the inmates at Mangwich Prison, where the technology has been implemented on pilot phase, shares the same sentiments. Prisoners who were going to fetch firewood, they are uh, doing a reform program, raining in classes. So, which means there's two things we're, we're learning at home. Biogas is helping us for uh, improving the welfare of the prisoners, but also in education right, there, there were certain prisoners who were illiterate, but now they are getting helpful because of the reform program which is at Mangochi. Instead of going to fish firewood, they are, they are going in classes to rain. I do encourage every, everyone who hears me here today that you can use human waste to implement a certain energy that can help in your life. This renewable energy technology is funded by the United Nations Development Program UNDP under the Climate Proofing Project. This was after saying that it has potential to mitigate negative effects of climate change and also in keeping with the practice of fulfilling some of the national development frameworks and strategies which the Malawi government put in place to develop lives of people including some international agreements which Malawi is party to. To that effect, a top-level sport Czech delegation comprising UNDP Malawi, Ethiopia and Minister of Energy and Environmental Affairs visited a climate-proofing project whose pilot phase has been implemented at Mangochi Prison in form of the installation of a biogas digester. Portfolio Manager for United Nations Development Program UNDP responsible for resilience and sustainable growth, Andrew Spezwork, led the delegation. We had an opportunity to visit uh, Mangochi Prison where through the climate proofing initiative uh, we're piloting a, a biogas installation. So as you know um, the demands for fuel wood are increasing across Malawi and this is a new technology where you're actually decreasing the need to fell trees and use fuel wood for, for cooking. An institution like the prison or other institu similar institutions that are, that are servicing a large community, be they hospitals or schools, can actually use this biogas technology to uh, reduce their, their demand for fuel wood and in fact reduce the demand for um, charcoal and that's leading to deforestation across Malawi. Again, you need to make this commercially viable and we're uh, working with a number of partners across the country to scale up those pilots and introduce biogas as a viable uh, alternative to charcoal production. Director of Environmental Affairs Department and the Minister of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Daong Gambale, was one of the delegates. In order to produce charcoal or to get firewood for cooking, the environment is being degraded and the environmental degradation uh, aggravates the risks of climate change. So we are happy that this uh, bypass has been installed at Manguji Prison as a pilot and we will be uh, watching to see if it can be replicated to other places. Government has a number of development partners. Among them is UNDP, which is sponsoring the implementation of biogas technology and there is therefore need to come up with a deliberate policy to ensure that it is adopted not only at district but at national levels respectively and at small and large scale levels. Reverend Moses Jimpebo is a district commissioner for Mangochi District Council. Biogas technology is a breakthrough for Mangochi District. I think it's the first of its kind in the district. Uh, to see such a technology. We've just been hearing about it in other countries, that it can work, it can work, but we have seen it really working in Mangoch at Mangoch prison, where now the, the prisoners are being saved uh, using the energy from biogas. I just want to register our great appreciation 
on behalf of Mangoshi District and the, the, the people of Mangoshi, Mangoshi District Council that um, the support that we are getting from uh, UNDP and the Global Environmental Facility through the Department of Environmental Affairs uh, is really assisting the district. You know Mangoshi is a disaster prone district and the issues of climate change heavily affect Mangoshi. Kamunon Ninkale is a forest patrol officer. His duty is to ensure that the forest is guarded against people who cut down trees for firewood and charcoal production. My plea goes to government and other organizations to encourage many people to use alternative sources of energy for cooking without using charcoal and firewood because this is the only way we can conserve natural resources like trees. Afforestation and the use of biogas are some of the measures that have been proved to be sure ways of mitigating negative effects of climate change due to their potential to restore trees. I can recommend to others to use the technology because as I've said that there is no labor that is attached to it because you use the locally available resources to produce the gas and uh, instead of maybe having some cost to manage those particular waste, you can use it wisely to produce the gas that you can use to cook, that's at a household level as well as, as an institution. In our technology, the most interesting part is that no one hand touches the human waste. So from the toilet it goes straight into our digester, and from there it, 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 the, the fermentation takes place and the digester has got an automatic system which releases the human waste that, that has been completely treated and it can be used as a, a nitrogen fertilizer which has got no effect because what the digester does is that it kills all the harmful bacteria that comes in the human waste and when it comes out uh, as biofertilizer it's safe to use and uh, it's usable. Uh -huh. mm. and. Um, the other perception that we've noticed is that people think that um, when you're using biogas, it means you're using your waste. But what we're saying is there are bacteria that are producing gas in the digester that is the one that you're harvesting, which goes straight to the pot and it gets burned because it's combustible. So it's one of the safest gas that you can use. And um, in terms of hygiene, we believe it's one of the best a uh, waste treatment plant that you can be used or utilized um, in institu institutions. As a country, uh, we've been relying much on uh, chemical fertilizer, which has now really affected um, the crop production. And we are saying it's high time we should uh, restore our soils. And we believe biofertilizer, which is rich in nitrogen, stands um, a chance of restoring our soils. So if you combine the two, and if you use biofertilizer, say, for the next three years consecutively, and then you completely stop using chemical fertilizer. First of all, my message is to the farmers. They are lucky. They have, we have this support, which we can easily use in order to improve their livelihoods. Secondly, I would also want to request other institutions higher learning institutions like uh, schools and like, like the issue of the biogas. This can easily be adopted in secondary schools because we have a larger population of students and the, in those cases we can easily have biogas at a large quantities. We can easily adopt uh, the biogas uh, approach and which means they will improve the world. But now at national level I would want uh, UNDP and Malawi government to continue partnering and uh, implementing this particular pro project. The results of uh, the findings that will be found here, if they can be replicated to the other districts, it will be very helpful because I have seen it working in Mangoji and I know it can work elsewhere in Malawi. We do uh, sincerely believe that uh, uh, within the next uh, few years we'll see a, a proliferation of uh, uh, similar initiatives and innovations in other institutions in the country. If you considered adopting the use of biogas technology both at institution and household levels, you stand to enjoy main advantages because apart from helping to uphold environmental benefits like conservation of trees, it also has other benefits socially, economically, just to mention a few. Environmentally, because deforestation would be effectively tackled since there will no longer be need for firewood and charcoal for cooking and heating. 
socially because quality of lives would be improved because of the reduction of workload that is usually required to execute tasks like collection of firewood and constant tending to fire during cooking. The use of biogas also produces a nation with healthy people, says respiratory diseases which come as a result of indoor smoke pollution would be reduced. Biogas technology ensures people's economic benefits in form of job creation in the construction industry and also most people have more time to think of best occupying their lives with sustainable livelihoods good for one's economic empowerment. Use biogas for clean and efficient cooking and conserve our forest.